we'll take our first question from John Reed. All right, man, can you share your, your your journey a little bit? I mean, you were in Jacksonville, I believe you stayed in your car a little bit and just <laughs> what it means to go from that to being in a Super Bowl and and just, you you know, just, I mean, all this kind of defines your, your character, but, but what it means to you to be at at this point? It's, it's, a motive, it's truly motivating um, and it's inspirational. Um, for me, you know, I, I'm focused on living life and, and not how far I came, but at the end of the day, when I do look back, it's amazing. You know, I was an undrafted free agent, you know, I believe I should have been drafted, the numbers speak. Uh, I came out of the University of Washington, uh, went um, with Coach Jack Del Rio and his crew uh, down in Oakland, Derek Carr, Mari Cooper, uh, uh, Michael Crabtree, Marshawn Lynch. So I was around guys in my upbringing and coming up through the league, uh, just getting all the info and the intel. And I wasn't one of those guys like, you know, woes me. Um, you know, ah, I should be the, the top guy. I should be one of the guys. It was like, nah, you got to make sure you keep that grind and keep that motivation and keep that going forward. You know, ultimately, you know, I get to wear a Super Bowl tag with, you know, my number on it. So throughout this whole process, going to Jacksonville, sleeping in my car, just trying to save everything. You know, some people, you know, don't understand how this is a temp job. You know, we 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 only get paid for six, <laughs> six months out of the year. So sleeping in my car was a decision to save as much money as I could. If I can put 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars to the side and continue to work in the off season and come back, stack as much more money. I'm only 26 years old. So I felt that it was necessary, you know, to do that uh, instead of getting caught in a lease and, you know, being in a lease and maybe getting cut and having to pay rent for in Jacksonville and wherever team I go to next. So it was, you know, it was a, it was a smart move by me and, and it was a humble move. But this whole journey and being at the Super Bowl, it, 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 this is what it's supposed to be. Rob, Rob, you can go ahead and unmute. Since you're not a starter receiver, and um, mm -hmm. of course the Buccaneers do have some star receivers, um, do you somewhat like relate to somebody like Ryan Griffin that I was surprised a few years ago when he signed to the Bucks and he's still playing up until now because I remember him playing for Tulane. Are you somewhat like more like relate to him as a QB uh, than Tom Brady? No, no. And and a lot of people would be surprised. Tom, Griff, uh, 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 Blaine, every quarterback we have, even to Josh Rosen, even to Jameis, like, like just throughout the time that I've been here, the mindset is the same. This coaching staff and this organization has a knack for pulling good people, you know, great football players, but good people. So when we're out there, I might be throwing with Griff. I might be throwing with Bland. I might be throwing with Tom. I threw with Tom all camp, you know. So when people were surprised, you know, uh, Monday night versus the Giants or any game that he's throwing me the ball, that's because when, you know, Mike was down and, and going through what he was going through in camp, I was the guy that was trying to help get the load and actually doing it. So with that, everybody teaches everybody. If, if Griff throws you a ball, Tom might say, hey, Mick, a little flatter, but not only does he teach you, he'll go through it with you. He'll stop the whole drill. You might, that's not might be my route. That might be Mike's route. That might be Chris's route, but he's going to tell me, hey, hey, a little flatter right there. You might be in there. You know, it happened this year. So let's keep it going. So to, to have all those guys and working as one nucleus and as one, it, it, you can't lose. You can't lose as a player. here. You, you're going to only develop in a positive step, standpoint. Okay, next question will go to Jess Sambra. Jaden, hello. Uh, with Athletes in Action here, um, you know, we talked to a lot of different guys like Peyton Manning, uh, Tony Dungy, mm -hmm. who had great influence on, on people. And, you know, like Peyton wrote in his book, you know, faith, family, friends, and football. Um, how do those things line up for you and, and who have been some mentors in your life that have impact who you are as a player on and off the field? That it lines up just like that. Faith, family, then football. Football is definitely last. Family is the second. But faith, it goes hand in hand. It goes first. Every time I'm back there to catch that punt, first thing I do is I pray. You know, I, I send a quick prayer to God. Anytime we go out there uh, before, you know, a big game, a practice, you know, you pray. You make sure that the Lord is going to cover you in his blood. And he's going to do everything necessary to put you in the right position so you can thrive. So, it, it, it tackles a lot of different variations for me personally because you have to believe when you come in undrafted, you know, you, 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 it's not, oh, my talent. You might get two reps, two, three reps the whole week of camp uh, when it was normalized. 
um, and, and, and maybe, you know, get some play in the preseason, probably the fourth game, maybe the first game a little bit. So when it comes to your faith, you got to have faith. You got to have faith in knowing your ability. You got to have faith in knowing that I know these players, that I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do everything that I can do to help this team win. But at the same time, you got to know that the family is the most important thing. And family is not just by blood for me. It's by loyalty. You know, it's by the people that's that been there with me from the jump when when you can have it all or you had nothing. And a lot of these guys, all of these guys are family to me. They we, We've been here when nobody believed in us. Even when we won first playoff game, nobody believed in us. Second playoff game, well, mm, Aaron Rodgers, third playoff game. Then we just kept going and kept it going now. People believe. So, you know, you got to keep the faith. You got to keep the faith. We're going to stay around this family and we're going to make football something special. Okay, next question we'll take from Mark Rosen. Hey, I had a question. Uh, you played more wide receiver in college, uh, but you've been more involved in, uh, in special teams at the pro level. And I know for some players, they might not have the patience for that. Um, but you seem to be shining in that spot. Do you relish in that role as a punt and kick returner? Relishing. Relishing. I love it. I love it. It brings the best out of me. You know, uh, people don't look at that role as important. That's the most important role and the scariest for some people on the field. That ball is up there on the higher than the rafters of the stadium. You know, that ball has to be caught. That ball has to be brought back to the offense. Or you can make a great play and a big splash play to change the dynamic of the game. Flip the field. You can do a hundred different things. If the kicker is probably scared to kick it to you because you're going to run one back, he might shank the ball and we might get a, a plus 50 uh, field position start. So when I first came into the league, you know, I had 203 receptions at the University of Washington. Guys were getting drafted. Guys was here. Guys is not in the league that, 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 that came in when I came in. But for some reason, for me, if anywhere I go and I'm playing receiver, I'm going to show that team that I'm a, I can play receiver. It's a reason why that you can be here and be a, a teamer, but we can use him as a six receiver if we need to. We had a lot of moments like that this year. So stepping up in that role and understanding your role, I don't have to be the guy. You know, we're at the pinnacle of what we do. At the same time, I got to know what's important for me, what's important for me to help this team. I'm helping myself help this team. So that is my main focus in, in any regard. I don't care if I get a return. I'm going to make sure I catch every ball square, nice, comfortable. If I'm not on uh, getting returns, I'm make sure I'm on a gunner. I'm making sure I'm on kickoff. Special teams, you have to be special to be a special teamer. And that's a huge job in what we do. Fred, Fred, you can go ahead and unmute. Hey, Jaden, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I just had a question uh, about your journey. Obviously, it's, it's very inspiring, and it's great to see you succeeding here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people now uh, going into the NFL draft. Some are getting drafted. Others like yourself are not. For the young men that may not be drafted, what advice do you have for them? Keep going. Keep going. And I say, and I say that with a demeanor, you know, so stout uh, that – if you believe nobody can stop you and nobody has stopped you this far, keep it going. Every opportunity you got, you can make 20, 30, 40 splash plays when you get your opportunity in camp. It's still never enough. The next play is your best play. You got to fight for everything. Some people, you know what I mean? They're, they're in guaranteed contracts, you know, regardless of what they do, unless they really do something really bad, they're going to be here. Some people, you know, like myself, like my others, you, you, you plan every week for your job. You know, you plan every single play, every day, every practice for your job to keep that consistent. So the consistency through everything you do, not only in football, but in life, you know, football is just football. Life, it transfers over. If you're not consistent in paying your taxes, if you're not consistent in taking care of your family, you're not consistent in communicating with your wife and communicating with your family and being that upstanding man, your relationship and everything you're in life is going to start tanking. It's going to start going down. Same thing in football. You got to keep everything consistent. Don't let nobody tell you no. If somebody, if you let somebody tell you no, you already won. You not built for this league because there's so much adversity in this league. There's so much ups and downs. There's so much reasons why you have to be a pro. You can be, you can be playing, then you can get put on a COVID test like a uh, list like me, be out for a month and come back in like nothing ever happened and you're still a pro and you're still there. doesn't matter if anybody looks at you. People know you're there. It's people around you that see what you're doing. And this, and this team, they see what you're doing. So keep going, keep striving. Do not give up. Keep getting it out the mud. Three departs with Double Tate Sports. 
Uh, you mentioned earlier one of the reasons that you were sleeping in your car in Jacksonville is because you wanted to save money. And mm-hmm. I know part of your reason for doing that is because you have business aspirations as well. Yes, ma'am. Where did that entrepreneurial mindset come from and how have your ideas come to fruition since then? I've always been, you know, I always had the entrepreneur mindset, uh, but it took it took honestly being undrafted and 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 going through everything I went through and allowing myself to understand like, hey, look, football can be over. It's things that's bigger than football. It's things that you can do off the field if you do it the right way and conduct yourself and and bring it all together. It can be bigger than what you can do in football. You know, so for me, it was just let me get myself whole as a man. You know, I'm working on myself as a football player. I'm I'm real good. I'm real quick. I can catch the ball. I can do everything. But let me work on myself as a whole individual person because the things that's off the field can affect the things that's on the field. So if I'm positive and I'm having a great, great, great mindset off the field, on the field, I'm going to be even more excited. You know, this is fun. This is football. This is a game. This is what we do. So having those balances in my life, along with the faith and family, having those balances allow me to understand how do I need to run my business when I get off the field? Because this and my body and what we do, this is a business. So we got to conduct it like that. So when I come to my real estate, when I come to my dog breeding uh, uh, business, I bring, I breed French bulldogs. Um, when I come to any business that I have that, that, it can be something little, it's a raindrop for me. So when I build those raindrops up and those raindrops keep falling, eventually it'll be a flood off the field and on the field. So it's just something that I, I really enjoy and take part in and, and, and excited to reach each level, you know, whether it's real estate, commercial commercial real estate, uh, 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 youth, youth football camps, um, want to build a gym one day. It's a lot of different things I want to do, but I'm making sure I keep two or three things, be consistent on it, with it at 26 years old and allow myself to build from 26 on. And hopefully, you know, by, by 30, I can say I got 20, 30 properties and, you know, hopefully I can still be returning some punts. Okay, next question, we'll go to Joshua Allen. How are you doing, Jadon? Bless, how about you? Good, I just want to take you to like the beginning of training camp where you got cut and, you know, we, we spoke on Twitter and you were you were upset about it. And then a couple of days later, you got back in here. And then you mentioned, you know, the whole COVID thing as well. Um, to be able to where you are now and how you've had such success, um, especially the last couple of weeks in the return game, uh, how has that journey all paid out, you know, panned out for you and and just talk about that a little bit uh I'm just a it's a blessing that I that I know what failure feels like but it's a blessing that I know what failure feels like but how failure with a positive mindset and you keep going can bring so much success so much success I've been in Jacksonville I didn't been in big games I didn't return big time punts uh kicks receiving what have you but, you know, at the end of the day, this is a what have you done for me lately type of league, you know, and with opportunities, yeah, I can do a lot of stuff, you know, uh, in this league. But for me, it's just, man, I'm looking back on it. I didn't really think about it until you said so. You caught me off guard, but getting cut before, you know, the season started, it, it really lit a, lit, a, lit a fire under me because I know that a lot of people, most people cannot cover me at all. When I get the ball in my hands, I'm explosive. You know, people may not know me, but if you see me run and you see me move, I, I'm very dangerous. So I know that. That's not for me to talk about. That's not for me to boisterize. That's not for me to, you know, explain and tell GMs and tell coaches. And that doesn't mean nothing. It's a mean, when do you go out there? When they give me that chance, when they call me back, I knew I wasn't leaving this building. I knew I was going to make that 53 man roster. I was not allowing myself to fail when it was up to me and it was my opportunity and I had the ball in my court and well, let alone where we play the ball in my hands. So it, it, it's amazing. And, and it just makes me hungry. It makes me want more. And then winning the Super Bowl, it, it, it'll make the story even better. 